Hey everyone, it's Mike Sullivan here. Hope you had a happy new year. I suppose this video could have been entitled, Where Has Sully Been? as opposed to Where Has Rob Monster Been? Uh, I admit that I have not been blogging on a regular basis over the past couple of years, but I am making an attempt to kind of get back into the swing of things this year. Um, I don't plan to blog daily like I have in the past, but definitely more than I have in the past year or so. Uh, but just before the holidays, I had the opportunity to sit down with Rob Monster and kind of catch up on what he's been up to with Epic. Um, I had pre previously talked to him just a few years prior to that, and a lot has changed since then, so I thought it'd be good to kind of find out what's going on and, and share that with you. So, so here's the interview, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right. Well, it's, it's great to talk to you again. It's been, you know, I don't know, it's been a few years since we last talked. So I thought it'd be good to, you know, get online and, and catch up and see how things are going with you and with Epic. Yeah. Um, so why don't you just tell me what's been going on over the past couple of years? Well, you know, it's been an uh, exciting uh, period of time for us. Uh, you know, there was a, an episode, as, as you may recall, back in 2010, when uh, we had some excitement related to uh, the product portal uh, business suddenly becoming not so compelling uh, in light of uh, what Google did with uh, the Google Panda index update. And uh, so we had to do some adjusting, and uh, we adjusted in a pretty significant way, uh, still being very passionate about the domain name asset class thesis and uh, opting to really focus on the aspects of the business that were highly sustainable and were in no way whatsoever dependent on the largesse of Google. Right? And, uh, um, we had the opportunity to buy an established registrar business with an excellent technology team and uh, were able to, in short order, add a lot of the other ancillary support capabilities that are kind of part and parcel these days with being a full service registrar. So uh, hosting was integrated and uh, we still have a, a strong foundation in the realm of uh, site development. Right. So uh, we are able to essentially give our customers uh, um, an integrated product, right? So uh, full service registrar, full service host, uh, design services, and that really, uh, as a as a composite product, appeals a great deal uh, to end users. And so uh, we are for you know first and foremost uh, catering to end users. So we serve about sixty four thousand uh, customer accounts now worldwide, um, and uh, you know uh, we do cater obviously also to domainers. Uh, but their needs are, are much simpler uh, in terms of uh, uh, just really shopping for value. And so we have a solution for that as well. I'm happy to get into that um, you know, in light of your audience. Uh, but uh, we have really built a pretty solid uh, foothold uh, in catering to small to medium-sized businesses and to individuals. And these are folks who typically don't have IT departments, uh, typically don't have a great deal of technical skill, uh, they will, in most cases, have, um, you know, an aptitude and a, a professional network that is relevant to their specific field, uh, but don't really have a lot of technical skills. So they're the ones who need uh, full service, and uh, they pay more. Uh, so we're we're not uh, competing head to head uh, with the um, the GoDaddy promo codes of the world. Uh, right, right. You know, for, for that audience, uh, for domainers, however, we will cater to them uh, with very, very aggressive pricing, and I'm, and I'm more than happy to dive into that at the appropriate time. So. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about so the shift to a registrar yeah. and um, site development. So, you know, what I mean, you help you help users and users build their sites or develop their sites, or you, you offer that service for them. Um, what kind of what kind of sites have you been putting out there, and what what has the result kind of been on the end user side? Yeah, so uh, most of the sites that get produced uh, for customers are relatively simple sites. Uh, so we do also also do more complex uh, e-commerce sites and uh, that type of thing. But the the main audience has been you know the folks who are looking essentially for uh, brochureware sites uh, and, and sites of that nature and uh, don't want to have to worry about uh, doing you know WordPress uh, version updates and uh, don't really have a foggy idea how to install a template um, and yet they're looking for value and so for those folks who need essentially a full service solution uh, but don't have any uh, technical skills uh, you know we are able to give them essentially the ideal solution and the folks 
who need uh, more complex custom developments, you know, we'll quote for that, and uh, we do a number of uh, larger uh, uh, complex development sites. But you know, the core focus is scale, right? Uh, designing for scale, and everything that we do at Epic is really you know designed for scale. Uh, the last business that I built, uh, we built to around sixty-five million dollars in annual sales, serving customers in about a hundred hundred countries. Um, and uh, doubled the business every year for seven straight years. And, and one of the things you learn in the course of building a business at that kind of rate is that you know your capacity to grow is going to be a function of your process uh, and, and very much uh, uh, processes driven these days by technology. So how you essentially translate best practices um, across the full gamut of requirements, whether it be uh, uh, user friendliness, whether it be um, customer support, uh, and, and whether it is foundation items like uh, security, patch registrations, prompt back orders, order fulfillment, all of these are processes, and you have to design them from the ground up uh, to be able to scale, whether you're catering to, in our case, 64,000 customer accounts, or whether it's, you know, multiply that by 10 or more, right? So, you know, we've really designed everything that we do uh, with an eye towards how will it ultimately scale uh, while continuing to be able to provide you know, a very high level of, of customer support uh, to uh, the end users that we cater to. So if you think about your own experience maybe shopping on the likes of Amazon, you know, Amazon has a, a product that you will rarely interact with. Uh, you know, the Kindle Fire now has a built-in video and you can interact with somebody. But in reality, most customers don't interact with anybody uh, on a live basis um, uh, at Amazon, and yet they have a fantastic product, uh, you know, an outstanding fulfillment, and so much of that is based on process. And so right. uh, we've really taken the approach from the ground up, how do we build, you know, a better company, uh, a better company catering to the domain name industry that from the ground up is built on values, principles, and processes that uh, align with, you know, the type of business that we would want to do business with. Yeah, so let, let's talk a little bit about the domain investor side. Tell me what services you provide or how you cater to that uh, that niche yeah. in, the, in the market. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, first of all, uh, most uh, professional domainers care about uh, price. Um, and so uh, when, you're, when you're dealing with hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of domains, um, you know, uh, a dime here, a quarter there uh, adds up quickly. And so... Uh, for professional domainers uh, who have hundreds of domains or more, uh, we, we make domains available at cost, which right now uh, for uh, verisign.com and the ICANN fee is $8.10. Uh, so no promo codes, just everyday uh, low price for uh, uh, professional domainers, and um, any professional domainer can contact us and get that price. Um, the, uh, the value proposition, however, is superior. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, domain uh, providers who will provide uh, domains at or near cost, uh, maybe with the extra hassle of tracking down promo codes and, and dealing with other overhead uh, associated with the marketing benefit of working at that kind of price point. But for Epic, uh, we view the domain name uh, professional as a channel partner. So the goal is not to make a buck off of the professional demeanor, but rather the professional demeanor has the inventory. Uh, they are the ones who are essentially uh, in a position to bring Epic new clients. So when they sell a domain name, we gain a client. So how else do we help a professional demeanor? We also will add the ability to uh, sell or lease domains commission-free in the Epic marketplace. So one of the novel things that we offer is that we have um, developed really an outstanding marketplace product uh, and probably uh, the most well-integrated leasing solution uh, currently available on the market. Um, so for customers who are looking for, uh, you know, a, a really tightly integrated solution for domain name management uh, that ties into um, selling and leasing domain names, uh, we've got a great product. And so there are folks who are using our platform uh, that are able to manage the domain name across the full uh, life cycle uh, whether it is from registration or from back orders, where we also are a significant player, um, uh, all the way through uh, sale or lease of domain names. And so uh, we have actually, I think, done probably one of the more comprehensive, more end-to-end, -end, seamless integrations for the entire life cycle 
of acquiring, developing, uh, and then selling or leasing a domain name on the back end. And all of the recurring billing and uh, chasing down of customers, as well as the um, post-sale or post-lease customer support, we handle all of that. So from a domainer's perspective, um, let me contrast for you the, the difference between working with Epic and working with you know pretty much most other folks. And, and, and not to pick on Sato because they're nice guys, but let's just contrast those two. Sure. So <clears throat> if you uh, have a domain name and you sell through Sato, then you'll typically have a process uh, where you're registering a domain name and then you have to manually uh, add the domain name to the Sato marketplace. Not the big deal, but it's the extra step. Right. Now, uh, you sell a domain name. You get a notification uh, that your domain name is sold. You log in. You go through several iterations through their uh, transfer center where you manage the uh, domain uh, process through escrow. And then somewhere along the line, a few days after escrow closes, you'll get funds deposited uh, into your um, uh, bank account or your PayPal net of a commission. Now, contrast that with Epic. Uh, with Epic, um, you, uh, you acquire your domain name. You are a registrar, of course. You list your domain instantly in the marketplace. Uh, a customer comes to your landing page uh, where your domain is listed for sale or for lease. Proceeds from the sale or lease are deposited instantly into your uh, account, which you can cash out commission-free, um, and you're done. Uh, there was no multi-day escrow delay process. There was no commission charged on your account. And you have essentially proceeds, commission-free and tax-free. So, you know, from our perspective, that's a more elegant process. And a few years ago, I certainly endorsed uh, to Sado the idea that they should consider becoming an accredited registrar themselves. They didn't pursue that idea. So we went ahead and solved that problem by becoming both um, a market maker for domain names uh, and also a full-service accredited registrar. And essentially baking that whole process in from the ground up to be a seamless user experience. And, and how many domains or domainers are you working with today on the aftermarket piece, on, on those aftermarket sales? You know, on the order of uh, you know hundreds, uh, but uh, not thousands. Uh, you know, these are essentially folks who are early adopters, and the folks who are using it are having a great experience uh, using those domains uh, and managing their domains uh, through their, the Epic Marketplace. Um, I had a, uh, an email from a, from a client uh, who used the marketplace for the first time on the weekend. Um, he had added a link uh, from um, actually the parking page. We provide managed parking, right? So if you are a domainer and you have uh, various parking relationships, uh, you can actually use our parking management service, again, commission-free. Uh, the domain names uh, then are, are parked by us. Uh, and then in the, uh, the header of the parking page, say a Voodoo parking page, it will give you a it'll give you a link uh, to the um, to the marketplace page where that domain is listed for sale. Okay. Uh, the customer in this case, uh, the end user who ultimately bought this domain name, clicked on that link, uh, bought that domain name right from our Epic Marketplace. Uh, the customer's uh, sale was processed instantly, uh, and and then proceeds delivered to the customer uh, who owned the domain name. And, and that was just a seamless experience that was a, was a sale of a domain name that, the, that the, our client had backordered a few days before. Uh, the backorder was, was successful, and then he was able to sell that domain name uh, commission-free uh, with zero effort, right? So the domain, way, domain name was simply listed in our marketplace. It was discovered by a link from a parking page that was monetizing for the customer. And the stats were visible, right? So part of the beauty of being an integrated platform, the end user who comes to the marketplace listing page, uh, sees verified, uh, third-party verified stats uh, that uh, provide verification uh, to the prospective buyer that they are getting a domain name that has a certain amount of traffic and or revenue right. uh, that they can count on. Right. So it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then you, you mentioned a parking service. How, um, you know, just thinking parking and how it's kind of decreased in you know, monetization value over the past several years, how are you seeing that uh, serving your domainer domainer users today? And are there other solutions for monetizing that you've been working with? Uh, it's a great question. You know, um, I, I think that uh, uh, parking, you know, has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. I would say that um, 
you know, a few years ago when we were getting started, I was not a fan of parking. Uh, I was, in fact, a huge, uh, how, uh, how you say, a uh, uh, non-fan of, of parking as a solution and uh, went headlong into development, some would call it mass development, uh, with some of those results being wildly successful. You know, product portals making thousands of dollars per month as an individual product portal uh, and being essentially windfall profit for those who were early adopters of the product portal uh, mass development model, but uh, ultimately becoming a victim of its own success. So, uh, you know, mass development clearly does not work. Uh, so uh, everyone who has tried it in one flavor or another ultimately succumbs to the reality of uh, what Google giveth, give, Google taketh away. So uh, I would say that uh, from the standpoint of monetization uh, these days, uh, there are really no shortcuts. Uh, you know, you either develop a domain name properly and create a value proposition uh, that is compelling to a user who will both come to it and then refer others. Uh, creating some element of virality, if you will, um, you know, or you park, right, uh, and, and then look to sell the domain name. And, and the implications are uh, significant for domainers because, you know, if mass development doesn't work and there's no free lunch from Google, uh, some of the, uh, what Rick uh, Schwartz would characterize as pigeon poop blog, uh, pigeon poop would, would uh, no longer be as attractive. Right. Uh, so, uh, hyphenated names, of which I was a big fan, uh, you know, and, and, and lesser TLDs, uh, like the .NETs of the world, you know, those names are much harder to sell uh, uh, to an end user. Uh, they do sell, uh, but they're harder to sell. Uh, and so, those names are kind of predicated on some type of development, right? You, you can definitely create value with a hyphenated com or a .NET name if you're willing to do the work. But most domainers are not willing to do the work. So it's one of these things where you either sell that domain name to an end user you know, within the first year of registration, or very likely you'll be maintaining that domain name for many years to come with, with not a great uh, return on investment prospect. So I would say that you know, these days, the emphasis should be not so much on mass development, but uh, doing good development more efficiently. And so that's where we have put our emphasis from a, from a platform and tools standpoint, uh, is creating a toolbox of technology solutions that make it relatively easy uh, to, to build a domain name into a functioning website, uh, to maintain that website, to have integrated stats, and to provide those integrated stats uh, to, to the benefit of a prospective end user or buyer of that uh, fully developed domain plus website, uh, if and when the developer of that domain is ready to sell it. And the implication to the prospective buyer of that developed site, um, whether they're buying or leasing or leasing to own, uh, is that they have the benefit of, number one, uh, continuity. Uh, so when they buy that developed site, all of the components required to operate that site are going to be delivered um, in an integrated manner without any uh, uncertainty as to whether or not the site that they're going to buy is going to operate as intended. You know, contrast that with the experience of buying a website on, say, Flippa or eBay, um, where there's no assurance that post-purchase that all of the components required to operate that site are going to be A, uh, available to you, and B, uh, maintainable by you. Um, so to the prospective buyer of a uh, developed site, you know, we, we provide uh, both the verification that what you see is operating on the site today, will be operating on the site tomorrow post-purchase. And uh, by the same token, uh, once it's purchased, the end user who is buying this developed site has the certainty that there's someone available to maintain it and uh, debug it uh, in the event that they struggle with the transition from prior owner to new owner. So I think there's a big difference. And by focusing our uh, development initiatives around catering to end users, we ultimately benefit the domainers. Right, I see that. Okay, um, and then a couple other things I wanted to touch on before I let you go. One is uh, you talked about leasing a little bit, and leasing has been you know a, a big discussion topic over you know the past several months. What what observations do you have in that area? What have you seen from your experience in leasing? Yeah, so uh, leasing is big, uh, and I, you know I, there are no published stats out there as to who's the biggest player in domain name leasing. But I mean we're clearly a player. Uh, we we more or less invented the category. 
not from the standpoint of the financial uh, aspects. Uh, I think that there have been prior attempts going back some years uh, for domain name leasing. Uh, Lease this was one that attempted it, and, and there have been others before that. But um, the, the, the leasing uh, challenge that nobody else prior had really solved, and for which we had filed, we have filed a patent, uh, is, is solving the issue of how do you protect the interest of both the registrant, who owns the name, and the end user who is using the name. Um, the typical process that is uh, in place for most leasing arrangements prior to what Epic developed was that you essentially were uh, in a blind faith relationship uh, between the registrant and the lessee. Uh, the lessee would contact the registrant and say, hey, change the name servers to XYZ, uh, and then a day or so later, whatever, uh, that, that DNS update would be made, right? Or if host records had to be edited, and so from the perspective of the lessee, they are really dependent now on someone whose core business is not maintaining domain names for the benefit of an end user. Um, that registrant's core business is flipping domain names, and that creates a problem. So we solve that by essentially as a registrar providing essentially a managed escrow uh, platform that uh, governs the operation of the domain name during the leasing period. So all the rebilling, all the remindering, uh, all of the uh, customer support related to using the domain uh, during the uh, life cycle of the lease is all managed by Epic. And so uh, from the standpoint of the registrant, uh, that registrant is able to essentially lease a domain name for some nominal fee between $10 and $5,000. We've seen significant range on that uh, per month. Uh, and then uh, allow the lessor... Um, uh, to be able to, um, or the lessee rather, to be able to uh, lease that domain name as far into the future as they would like, typically maxed out to five years. Right. So as long as the lease is active, uh, the, uh, the, the, the lessee of the domain name has uh, full use of the domain name from their Epic Control Panel. The only thing they cannot do is see the off code or change the who is. But beyond that, they have full use of the domain name. And then at the point of time of their choosing, if there's a buy option on that domain name, the lessee can trigger that option, and then they can be assured that the moment they trigger that option, the domain name is going to be delivered to their account. Right? And so uh, all of that uh, is working very, very well. And uh, so we are big fans of the leasing model, I think, in this age, um, where small to medium-sized businesses have limited access uh, to, to low-cost capital. Many of them are looking to find ways to, uh, you know, stretch out their startup dollars, and so they will lease a domain name uh, for tens or hundreds of dollars per month, and then buy the domain name when their uh, capitalization situation improves or when they've validated that their economic model uh, is actually going to pan out. And so the leasing platform is perfect for this, and I think that whenever a domainer encounters resistance uh, to a price point for selling a domain name. Uh, the, the, their, de their reflex position should be, well, what about leasing? And uh, you know, if they need a solution for lease management, Epic has a commission-free leasing solution that is ready to go. All right, good to hear. Yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about at the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned how uh, you know, a, a shift in Google really changed your entire business model. So I wanted to ask, how, how difficult was that to adjust to you know, one one change in the you know the environment, uh, really causing you to relook at your entire business and make a change there. What what advice do you have around that? Well, you know, I think actually it's even bigger than that. Uh, uh, even bigger than uh, business models. I think that um, we have to uh, step back. Uh, and um, it is Christmas time, and of course during the time of Christmas we celebrate the the birth of Jesus Christ, and uh, you know Jesus is Lord. And I think that. Sometimes we, uh, as, as business people, lose sight of ultimately who's in control. And I made a comment about uh, Google giveth and Google, Google taketh away. Well, it's bigger than that. Uh, ultimately, you know, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So I think that um, we, as business people, should never lose sight of the big picture, uh, which is that we ourselves in our flesh are not always in control. Uh, we in our flesh uh, uh, can focus on delivering a compelling value proposition, 
And uh, sometimes you get a windfall, a lucky break. You can call it what you will, uh, provenance, right? Uh, and uh, Google's index product of giving favor to exact match domain names was was provenance. It was a lucky break. Uh, it was a it was a wave to ride. And uh, so we rode it aggressively and built a very significant business in a very short period of time, growing uh, you know hundreds of percent per year, uh, year on year. Uh, and so uh, it was looking very, very promising. Um, and um, part of the magic of that, of that uh, long term, but part of the advantage of our, of our offering at that time uh, was that we also offered uh, a performance guarantee. Uh, so if you put money in, then you would get your money back within a year. And the calculus of that was very straightforward. Um, the product portals were so wildly successful that it was a slam dunk. Uh, it was a win-win and a slam dunk. And uh, uh, but when the indexing strategy changed, uh, that was uh, a problem uh, because those product portals started to underperform. And we honored those guarantees. Uh, we honored those guarantees. And uh, so during the 2011 timeframe, when those various guarantees were being uh, triggered, uh, we honored those. And uh, it was uh, at a significant uh, loss to the business actually for. Uh, sustained period of time and so during that period of time we were doing two things number one we were honoring our commitments uh, to the letter uh, and at the same time we were reinventing the business and reinventing the business is no small task uh, I think uh, you know a lesser uh, uh, you know stakeholder would have said well forget this try another day and go start another business and uh, and you know forget the stakeholders and and I didn't take that attitude. You know, to me, uh, this is something that, um, you know, I think in this day and age, uh, not not to make a statement uh, about about values too broad, but I think that there are a lot of people in this day and age that take a disposable view to life. Right? Marriage doesn't work, get a divorce. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, your your business doesn't work. You know, flush it down and, and start another one. And I think that's the wrong attitude. Uh, I think that. Uh, uh, as a guy who is, you know, by the way, ha you know, very happily married and has a wonderful family and are very blessed in many different departments, I would say that uh, when it comes to business, uh, uh, we have to be over overcomers. We have to find ways uh, to deliver uh, value back to the stakeholders who entrusted uh, their resources uh, to us as business persons. Find a way. And uh, it just so happened uh, that uh, around that same time, we had an opportunity to buy uh, a registrar business uh, from uh, an established group that had already some significant customers and uh, some established technology. And it was a, a really a, a great opportunity because I also anticipated one other thing that you haven't asked me about, and that is the coming time of the new GTLDs. Right. And the new GTLDs, I think, are going to be a windfall uh, for registrars. Uh, I think it's going to be less exciting for domain investors, but it's going to be a windfall for registrars. And, um, and so uh, in, in an environment of uh, increasing supply, uh, there's going to be a greater need for registrars that are facing towards end users, because it's going to be end users who are going to buy these new TLDs. The dot lawyer, dot accounting, you know, uh, accountant, those are going to be end users who are going to buy those domains. And so, uh, you know, by, by becoming a registrar and uh, focusing on end users and providing a value proposition that supports a higher price point uh, for serving uh, end users with a higher level of service, uh, we were able to create a defendable niche. Uh, a defendable niche that caters to an audience that has a fair amount of sticking uh, power, so they're not uh, likely to change allegiances at an instant because they really don't view managing their domain name as a core task. They view it as a task that should work and does work so long as you choose a reputable provider. And we fulfill that role and uh, we provide an exceptional level of service and support and uh, that has really differentiated us uh, uh, vis-a-vis the end users. We will go the extra mile, whatever that happens to be. Uh, most times end users don't know what questions to ask and so we help them figure out what needs to be done, and we make it happen. Uh, and the meter isn't always run, uh, so different approach as well. Uh, because we are full service, uh, you know, there's not this constant mindset of um, uh, tacking on hidden fees and, and this type of games. 
that goes on uh, throughout the industry. So at Epic, it's full service, it's all inclusive, and that has really uh, been uh, unique and to some people a breath of fresh air uh, to the customers that we serve. And that has resulted in uh, this what I call defendable niche that we are growing uh, quite actively, uh, you know, vis-a-vis serving the end user community, while at the same time not losing sight of the legacy of customers that we have catered to in the domainer community, who we warmly welcome and for which we have an excellent product. All right, fantastic. Well, that's all the questions I had for you. I, I can think of at least a half a dozen more that I could continue to talk about, but I uh, don't want to take up all of your time today, so I, I appreciate yeah. it. And uh, you know, I would like to talk to you again in the future and maybe go through some, some additional areas. Yeah. Uh, but I want, I want to thank you for your time and um, you know, have, a, have a great holiday. Yeah, likewise. Okay, Mike, happy, happy holidays to you as well. All right, thanks a lot, Rob. Talk to you soon. Bye, Mike. Take care.